1998 Nintendo. Suddenly this game appears with some of the best graphics in the most epic adventure we've ever seen. We are the hero of time and we can take back Hyrule. Ocarina of Time was just such a successor to A Link to the Past from the Super Nintendo and this game, playing it now, just takes me back to that moment, pushing that sword down in the Temple of Time and I'm taken back to 1998. It's a game that now still takes me back to my youth, when the bar was raised on 3D gaming and we had one of the best 3D adventures ever made and I'd think that every time I would jump on a pona and ride around Hyrule Fields. This was just such a big adventure with a big map and using the ocarina you could teleport yourself from one place to the next and it really just helped you move quickly around the map and see the different variety of locations that you would have, whether it was in the forest, in the volcano, or even in more tranquil water areas. So the items were fantastic in this game. The hookshot was one of my favorites, which you had to use to get into the forest temple. Uh, the use of items was really, really good in this game, as was the use of battling. So you had the targeting system, which just really enabled you to lock on and focus your attacks. And it was something that never really worked that well in many games before it, but it just worked really, really well to be able to lock in place and deliver those attacks for battle where you needed them to be. The variety in the costumes was fantastic as well. So needing to wear the red suit for the heat resistance as you went to the crater and into the temple of fire, was just always so cool needing to manage your gear in that way. It really brought the RPG element to life and the different enemies that you would have to face to go along with that. One of my favorite memorable bosses was Volvagia, that lava dragon, and it just really, really brought an ominous battle to life and you had to survive. I always used to think after that battle, I would cool down with the serenade of water and head towards Lake Haelia just to cool down. Maybe even take a trip into the water temple? No, forget that. Never again. I'll use the Song of Storms to cool me down. Now, although the original one, the Nintendo 64, hadn't aged so well, we've had multiple versions since. So the 3DS had the, the 3D version that you could play on a handheld, and they up the graphics there. It looked fantastic in 3D. But we also have the GameCube version, the Master Sword, Master Quest version, and the graphics were just beautiful, and it was a way to replay the adventure in a slightly new way. It just kept the game fresh and added some level of difficulty to the fight. So here we can see Phantom Ganon just looks absolutely beautiful. The graphics are just so good. And this is one of my most memorable moments in the game. It was just so epic with him going in and out of the paintings, which kind of links as well to A Link Between Worlds, the successor on the 3DS to A Link to the Past. Other boss fights that were so, so, so cool were the twin Sorceress Sisters and the Twin Rover Battle. I'll always remember this from the music, because the music in the game was just so, so great, and just really helped bring it to life. This is just one of those fights I really loved, because I loved the characters, and I always loved what The Legend of Zelda did, where you managed to use the items in battle that you got from the dungeon, and you would actually need that to progress and manage to deal damage to the bosses. And I'll always remember here, the mirror shield, which just had such a good use of re retracting, rebounding shots to take down the enemy. I'll never forget that first time I walked into Ganon's castle, having achieved all of the items needed to progress and be able to have the backing of the sages to bring down that magic barricade to go in to face the final challenges in the game. After what was a really big adventure, it was one of the largest RPGs, where you might have spent sort of 12 to 18 hours progressing through the game, depending on how quick you managed to do that. But I'll never forget the grand finale fight with Ganon. It just looks absolutely glorious here from the GameCube version. The graphics are absolutely on point. 
And it's just something I'll never forget. The scale of battle, how good Ganon actually looked. Knowing that the final moment is upon you on one of the best games that you'd ever played. And it really is worth another playthrough today. I'd recommend to pick up the GameCube version. You'd need to buy the Wind Waker to get the, the bonus disc. It was a limited edition item, but it is one of the best ways to relive the Ocarina of Time today. And I still love it. So there we have it, guys. Why I love the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. What do you guys think? What was your favorite, fondest memories of the game? What did you enjoy most about this video? Let me know down in your comments. Always like to hear from you. Anyway, guys, please smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so already, guys, because we've got loads more retro game and gaming goodness coming up in future. Keep it here with Gaz Loves Games. Yes, mate. Yes, mate.